Welcome to Deep Dive. This is Kevin Benedict, the ho your host today, and I want to thank all of you out there for joining us, and I'm excited today to have as my guest Bridget Perry, who's the Vice President of Marketing for EMEA for Adobe. Thanks for joining us, Bridget. Thanks for having me, Kevin. So, Bridget, things are changing fast in your world. They you are. haven't always lived in London. I just arrived here, actually. I've been here um, since July, wow. and um, it's great to be here. Um, I spent the last seven years um, at Adobe working out of our corporate um, headquarters and just recently joined here to lead Adobe's marketing in Europe. All right, so I bet that was an interesting transition to not only change roles, but change geographic locations. Um, for sure, and you know, it's, it's been really fascinating. Um, you know, just getting to know not only uh, London itself, which is an amazing city, but also working with um, groups and uh, across the region, um, a whole variety of cultures and um, across a number of countries. So in addition to your recent move and change in roles, you also have Marketo to uh, integrate with. That's the big acquisition you guys just closed, right? Yeah, for sure. We're, we're very excited about the acquisition of Marketo. And um, yeah, we are um, moving on a fast pace. They're already a part of our Adobe Experience Cloud, a part of our marketing cloud solutions. And, you know, personally, um, as a marketer um, within this company, I'm excited to start using Marketo ourselves. So that's on a fast path. Um, in the next couple of months, we'll start using it internally. So, um, Bridget, for those that are not familiar with kind of the whole stack that Adobe is bringing to the table, where does uh, Marketo fit into that? Well, sure. So, you know, Adobe's offering really is around helping companies deliver end-to-end -end great experiences to their customers across all touch points, all channels and devices across the entire customer journey. And if you think about it, to do that, it requires a really robust uh, data platform, as well as connecting that data to content and delivering that in an automated, real-time fashion. And so the Marketo solution is a core component of that. It's really around the automation of that experience that we're delivering to customers. Um, Marketo has um, been in the market for a number of years and um, serves both B2B and B2C use case, but on the B2B use case, um, it has the ability to, to connect that experience and that engagement with customers and connect that to the sales organization that's ultimately then um, engaging with those customers um, and, and delivering solutions to those customers. So let it's a great addition to our portfolio. Let the fun begin, Bridget. Oh, that's going to be fun. So you're in a kind of a unique position here. You are a marketer in a marketing company selling to marketers. Indeed. So, so how is that role kind of different from somebody else that might just be selling to consumers? Sure. Well, I mean, first off, I just have to say that I feel almost blessed, right? Because I'm working at a company that has some of the great, the best tools on the creative side for the, cre the creation of new ideas and content um, married together with really the best platform for the delivery of that content and experience to customers. And so, as I mentioned before, um, not only am I a marketer marketing to marketers, I also have the benefit of using our own technology yeah. to do that. And what I would say is that, you know, the bar is high, right? Because um, not only is it a great opportunity, but there's also, we're setting an example um, for our customers in terms of how to use, how to bring that together, both the content, the data, on, um, and delivery. Um, and so, you know, it's exciting. It's really fun um, to be a part of this company and a part of um, Adobe at this time. And I would say that, you know, of, of, of all companies that I've worked at in the past, Adobe really has an appreciation and understanding of the value and impact that marketing can drive to the business. Um, and so it's great to be a part of that. 
So talk to me about how the MarTech stack, I mean, you guys just added Marketo to your stack. What does a best practices kind of marketing MarTech stack look like today? Well, you know, I think that it really starts with a couple of things, right? It starts with the data and understanding your customers. So being able to use the data to understand your customer and your customer segments and, and understand the journeys that your customers take across all touch points, across all channels and devices. As you get that understanding, it also takes the content to be able to deliver up that experience. And with the technology and Marketo as we in, uh, more specifically, you know, it's not easy to do that in a manual process. You need automation, right? And so that's really where Marketo comes in. Um, it's a core component to being able to engage the customer over time, nurture in an automated fashion. Um, that combined with some of our other technology, which enables you to reach new audiences, you know, whether it's through our advertising cloud, reach those new audience segments and bring them in so that you can begin to automate that journey and engagement. Bringing those together, I think, are really um, powerful. Oh, absolutely. And whenever I hear the word automation, Bridget, I think there must be good data in order to enable automation. So what's yeah. the increasing role that data is playing in your MarTech stack? Oh, sure. I mean, data is actually absolutely essential. And you've probably, if you've been following the news um, in recent years, Adobe's built out a couple of key partnerships, one with Microsoft, the other more recently with Microsoft and SAP around the Open Data Initiative. The reality is that many large enterprises have data on customers sitting in silos, and it's really important for these companies to bring together that data to provide a holistic view of the customer. And that's really the foundation for being able to then engage those customers and deliver the right experience at the right time um, to drive the right outcome for your business, whether that's um, immediate sales or it could be long-term um, usage and retention and loyalty. And so data is really the foundation of, of all of that. And it, at Adobe, we've been investing for a number of years and, and building out a platform where customers can ingest all of that data and have a single view of the customer to be able to market in a personalized manner um, mm. across that journey. And so, yeah, data, data is really um, the most important thing today, not just for marketers, but it is that point of distinction and differentiation and competitive advantage for most businesses today. And the technology is going to enable that. So Bridget, let's talk about you as a marketing leader. I mean, going from North America over and having um, responsibilities across Europe, and um, that means there's a, even a greater degree of complexity. There's cultural differences, language differences. How do you manage the, con the complexity of managing content across all those different geographies, cultures, and languages? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, content is one of those things that many companies have a lot of content, they produce a lot of content, and when it comes down to it, it really starts with understanding your customer and understanding what content you need in order to engage that customer, what information they're going to need over the various stages of their engagement with your, with your company. And so, you know, the way that we've kind of looked at it is we start with our customer segmentation and we build out our content um, strategy and our, our customer journeys aligned, you know, the content strategy aligned with the customer journeys. But what we also do is we maintain that, you know, within a common um, asset management system and we do a ton of testing and optimization, right? We have insights and understanding of the customers across different markets. We have people in market that are bringing their own understanding of those various customer segments. But we try things. We test, we learn, and then we make adjustments. And a great example of this is take a country like Germany. We've learned over time through testing and, and learning how customers are engaging with us, especially on the B2C side of our business, that in that market, there are um, different needs and uses and, and, and degrees of information and data that um, consumers in that market need in order to make a decision. And so we've had to change the way that we 
um, layout content, the way that we provision, you know, that we provide information and, and assets to that market and to those consumers um, in order to help them get what they need in order to make that decision um, uh, to, to um, purchase with Adobe and to stay a customer. So, yeah. so it really does start with, I think, understanding of the customer and adapting, testing, and learning um, in an ongoing way. Yeah, so I heard recently that in Germany, the first thing people want to do is read those user agreements. And in the United States, people just click right past those and nobody reads them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, it certainly is true that in that market, um, there is a need for a lot more information understanding before yeah. that purchase decision. And, and especially when it comes to subscription business, which as you're, you must be aware that Adobe has a subscription offering, and that's not common in some um, markets in some countries. It's, it's still somewhat new, and in Germany in particular, they need a lot more information up front before they're going to actually give you um, their credit card or their um, debit card to be charged on a regular basis. So, you know, we have to understand and appreciate that, and it took us a little while to, to kind of design the right experience and oh, to yeah. adapt the content and information. And that's just one market. Of course, we've got to do that in other markets. Um, and that is the, the beauty and benefit of digital, right? Because you can do a lot of this and test and learn and adapt in real time. And it doesn't require months of up, upfront consumer research um, and user usability testing, right? We can do it almost mm -hmm. immediately and get Absolutely. results in a short period of time. So Bridget, is more data or less data required today, given all these segmenting of the market where you can start understanding all the different likes and dislikes and different cultures and languages? Does that require a lot more content today than it used to? For sure. I mean, and that's not only unique to a market like Europe, um, where, which is complex with different cultures and languages. You know, we hear that across the board from our customers um, global, um, you know, Fortune 500 companies that are encountering the same challenges, which is that as a business, as you begin to provide more personalized experiences and you begin to get more insight into your customers, it does require that you have an ability to not only, um, it requires a need for more content, right? But it also requires an, a need to be able to be adaptive with your content. Right, because you need to, in many cases, have content that can adapt not only to the channel, but also adapt to various languages in real time based on, you know, and that, that's the beauty of digital. That's what digital can enable. Um, and a lot of, you know, of our Adobe Experience um, Cloud is the backbone that we use in order to provide more of that dynamic content at velocity um, in, in the experience delivery to our customers. Fascinating times, Bridget. So let's talk about consumers and their changing behaviors around content consumption. Have you seen different trends over yes. the last five years where they're, they're, they're looking for content in different ways, in different manners, and in, 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 in different locations and sizes? And you know, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The most obvious one is really mobile, right? So we see that you know, uh, the, the amount of traffic that comes to our site that's mobile traffic has increased exponentially over just even over the last year. Um, and really, it's that people are on the go, right? They're, they're accessing content on their commute into work or on their, um, you know, on their downtime in between meetings. I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole move to mobile has changed the way in which companies, brands need to be able to deliver content and experiences. That's one key one, I'd say. You know, the other big one, obviously, is video, right? And we see this in terms of people have short, they want to get short snippets of content. They want to be able to sometimes um, see it and listen to it versus read it. And that's also the context often when people are on the go um, and have short moments. And so all of that has, to, has had an impact in terms of the way that from a marketing discipline perspective, we think about the types of content and assets that we need to deliver. It's also really critical that as marketers, we understand context, right? Because we need to understand as our customers are coming to us, what's the context in which they're um, consuming content? And then how do we deliver up that right content to meet the context of 
um, where they are and how they want to receive it. And so, you know, more and more you see brands doing this. You see um, companies that um, are upstart companies that are doing it quickly and, and it, in a really impactful and great ex way that provides great experience. And it puts pressure on many other more established brands to be able to adapt act quickly and, and change the way that they um, engage with their customers. We're seeing that not only mm -hmm. for ourselves, we're seeing it for our customers um, that we support. So Bridget, earlier you brought up the notion of um, intelligence, more intelligent systems. You have the open data initiative. initiative. Yeah, yeah, ODI. That you're engaged in with SAP. Yeah. 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 And others. So, talk to us about the role of intelligence. Everything from machine learning to artificial intelligence and other kinds of automation, robotics. How are you seeing that impact marketing today? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of areas where we're starting to see it um, take hold. Um, the most obvious one is really around the productivity use case, right? And that's around um, you know over or. Um, taking over or making accelerating tasks or taking away tasks that are redundant and uh, low value add. So, you know, whether it's in the creation of content and assets, um, there are a number of machine learning and AI baked into a number of our products, for example, that help creatives not have to do repetitive tasks that make their work um, more productive. So it frees them up to be more creative. It's also in the uh, tagging and identification of content, mm -hmm. and it's also in the delivery of content. So machine learning and AI can automate a number of those tasks, which free marketers and up to be much more creative um, and, and have an impact on more higher value added things. The other major use case for AI right today that, that is really starting to take hold is around personalization. And we're just at the beginning of this. We recently did a, a, a research um, project in Europe. Um, uh, we released a paper called Context is um, Everything. And essentially what we did was we surveyed about 600 marketing leaders across Europe to understand how um, AI is changing the way that they do their jobs and, and what they see coming in the future. And what we found is that personalization was the number one use case that marketers wanted to crack. 80% said yes, personalization is absolutely imperative for my business, and only 30% felt like they were doing it um, well today. And so what we saw in this research is that about two-thirds are already planning, piloting, or rolling out um, uh, pi um, examples or initiatives around personalization um, using algorithm, advanced algorithms and artificial intelligence. And so, you know, I think we're just at the beginning. Many of them, I think, are aspiring in the next couple of years to have a lot more of this online. Um, but that really is, I think we're going to see this, the, the impact of machine learning and AI um, have a significant impact in the way that marketing um, does, is able to engage customers in a really short time frame. Um, and, you know, it starts with the data, like we talked about before. Our data is absolutely essential to get in, in shape, but there's, um, there's so many benefits of personalization um, to a company's bottom line. We see some brands that are piloting and rolling out um, artificial personalization using AI, driving real impact um, in terms of new revenue, in terms of um, um, uh, active use or consumption. Um, for subscription businesses and in terms of retention. Oh, absolutely. But it's not just all about technology, is it? We also have to support the regulatory environments like GDPR. Yeah. And, and we have to understand those and understand the sentiment behind it and build that into our systems as well so we can yeah. be a good corporate citizen and um, wherever we're at. So talk to us about how do you both, uh, you know, give exceptional uh, customer experiences through personalization while at the same time, you know, understanding and supporting GDPR. Yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's really fascinating actually to be here in Europe. Um, and I was here at the time that um, GDPR came into effect. And as I mentioned before, not only did we do this research, but we've had an opportunity to go out and talk to a number of our customers 
about the research findings and also get input from them in terms of what they're seeing. And what we've seen with GDPR in many cases is that it caused a number of brands to get their data in-house, you know, their data in order. We had a number of our customers say, you know what, it was almost like a spring cleaning. We knew we had to do it. GDPR was the forcing function for us to do it. And now, you know, we have to maintain it. And so I think one, number one, it was a good exercise for companies to get their data in, in shape. You know, number two, I think it, it does the right thing in terms of focusing on the customer, right? Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, personalization can support and drive the business, but only if it's delivering a good experience for the customer. And a good experience for the customer is an experience that is that um, ensures that there's been consent, that provides transparency to how their data is going to be used, that ensures the highest security and privacy practices, and that also not only that, but delivers some additional value to the consumer, right? So GDPR, so the brands that are really doing it right are not looking at GDPR as just a, a requirement that they have to follow. They're looking at it as an opportunity to provide a better experience for their customers. And Adobe, we kind of call this experiential privacy, but really it's about providing a better experience. And that's going to deliver, you know, a a longer term relationship of trust. It also supports, you know, your ultimate brand, right? And so, um, you know, I think in some ways it's interesting to have come here at this time because I think that European brands who have had to comply with GDPR, right, and global brands, are maybe in some cases ahead, right, of the curve in terms of um, that delivery of an experience that consumers will trust. Thanks for sharing that, Bridget. Yeah. So Bridget, as a leader, what advice would you give to a young up and coming marketer, you know, on the skills they will need to be developing today in order to be valuable tomorrow? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I, when I look at, for talent, quite honestly, I look for really well-rounded, quote unquote, athletes, marketing athletes who come to the table with a growth mindset because the world is changing so quickly. Technology is changing. Consumers are changing. And so this world of coming with a static set of skills and an expertise in a functional area are over, right? You need individuals that are always on that learning curve and willing to understand what's happening in the market, understand what's happening with consumers. So I'm looking for that. The other thing, though, I think is you need somebody with a data-driven mindset and somebody who also has an appreciation and understanding for what technology um, can do to um, how you can use technology to innovate and drive a better experience for your customers. Um, And lastly, someone who knows how to team, right, and partner. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is um, best-in-class marketing is marketing where you're bringing together a number of disciplines and functions, whether it's bringing together and partnering with IT, or it's bringing together and working closely with data scientists within the organization or externally. It's working across um, creative, right? So it's not just about the data and technology. You have to be able to have that um, understanding of the creative and the content that will inspire your customer, right? And it's working across specific areas and functions that relate to channel and channel expertise. And so you need somebody that can work across, you know, cross functions, work with sales as well, work with product um, and your product teams and be able to bring that together and deliver the experience that your customers expect, right? Or your perspective customers expect. So I look for that individual Mm -hmm. who is well-rounded growth mindset and um, can be a part of a team um, and is customer focused and data driven. Bridget, thanks for sharing your insight there uh, and your experience too. So everyone pay attention to that. So now let's look forward at 2019. We just jumped into it. So it's been, it's been a, we just joined this brand new 2019. What are some of the biggest trends Adobe is predicting or forecasting or anticipating for this year? What's going to be yeah. different? Sure. So actually, it's kind of timely because every year around this time, we partner with e-consultancy and release a digital trends report. Our digital trends 2019 is coming out at the end of this month. Ooh, you have I, any- I got a, a sneak peek into it before this call because I said, well, gosh, you know, if I'm going to comment on the trends, then it would be good to have research to support it or data to support yes. it. 
Um, but interestingly enough, um, the number one trend or topic that's top of mind for those that we surveyed, and this survey was actually not just in EMEA, it also covered um, the US and mm. also um, Asia and Japan. So we had a, a, a global survey this year. Wow. And what was top of mind um, at number one was optimizing the customer experience. So that is really what, what marketers are concerned about is delivering that great experience and optimizing, obviously optimizing to drive their business goals and objectives, but also to drive a better customer experience. So that was number one. Number okay. two, um, in terms of maybe the next three years, um, what was top of mind and what actually got marketers most excited was delivering personalized experiences in real time. Um, so the in real time part I thought was, was really the critical piece. Personalization I think is top of mind today for marketers, but that ability to do it in real time, that requires what we talked about earlier which is that data is in you know you've got a complete view of the customer you've got your data that is um, able to be able to um, enable you to action in real time and that's something that um, technology is is enabling but will even more so as tech, as marketers adopt the technology they'll be able to deliver so that was a uh, number one but maybe in the next uh, two to three year horizon oh that's fascinating you know I read a lot of the books that came out of the urbanist Paul Virilio out of Paris, and he always talks about the social impact of speed and how speed is really the essence that's changing everything. And I can yeah. see that real time personalization is all about how fast can you do it? Yeah. How can you access the data? How fast can you provide those personalized con contextual experiences that are relevant to the customer? So yeah. I can just see the ripple effect of, of, of those concepts going through society today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Bridget, for sharing yeah, all this you. with us. Yeah. Thank this you is, very much. This is powerful. I wish you the best of luck in your new role there. Uh, Adobe's gonna um, just gonna ha be having so much fun rolling out the whole new suite there. So, congratulations and thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks so much for having me, Kevin. Take care. And I want to thank everyone out there that was watching uh, us today. Thank you for joining. Bye bye.